Yes. Yeah, that first the album was crazy. Yes. That one of you dressed like. Okay. So everyone like when they think guitar and hip hop, they think that's what a guitar solo is. But you can be real creative and vibey, and you know, sure. like you can be more. So, to talk about what I was talking about with the uh, new wave of guitar, there's a lot of scratch that's been happening, like for the last time I did it. Crazy thing about this guitar. Yeah, people are like, hey, bro, just started, bro. Remember when we started? Yeah, I remember when we started. <laughs> Second episode at your old pad. It's kind of crazy to think of the evolution because this setup is nice. You know, I, I think about you sometimes in my terms of my music career. I think about someone who's just consistently grinding, who's been. I always think about the idea of consistent, sustained promotion, and you're doing that, man. Like, you're continuously putting out stuff, and you're continuously building and iterating on those things. And I think about that, because I, like, this is crazy from the last time I was here, but it, it didn't happen overnight. No, that was 20, early 2019. That was, yeah. like, February, January, February 2019. And now you were one of the first people I hit up with the podcast, because I was like, I didn't really know about the music scene that yeah, much, yeah. but I knew you've been playing since high school, bro, because I remember... This dude used to have, like, guitar bat as well. The people, he had, like, these long-ass nails, and he was yeah. one of those, like, just rocker dudes. He had long hair, too, no? Yeah, I did. I remember that. J just to clarify, I have long nails to play guitar. Like, I don't know if that was just a <laughs> random fact that people was like, well, what is that? He's <laughs> got these that's Coke that's nails. nails. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I was just like, I just want to clarify that real quick. Hey, living that rock star life, bro. <laughs> bro, I, when I said I live like a rock star, I said I live like a rock star. I haven't slept in six weeks. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, that's it. So, yeah, we did that podcast 2019. A lot has happened since then. A lot has happened, man. So, now we shot music video together. Yeah. I, I'm i glad that you, we were able to link up with that. I had that concept. I had that idea. I know you've been doing all sorts of stuff. So, I've been really following and watching everything you've been doing. And then I remember I went to go see, I think it was Billy Dale or somebody. But I, low-key, I went to go to a show that I thought you might be at. Just so I could find you and get that link up in person whenever oh, possible. Sick. Yeah. I, I'm kind of skipping fast forward real quick, but I did that with Tina Turntables. I hired her for the show. 
that we had. And I remember I could DM her, but where is she going to perform? So I went to go see her at a performance, talk with her, vibe with her, try to vibe in the area on the, you know, just the event. And then afterwards say, hey, real quick, what are you doing this night? Because I have a performance. Are you free? Can, can I hire you? And all this stuff. So I went to go see at a place you might be at. Then I caught you. And yeah, man, you killed it. Music video That's was dope. dope. Music video was fire. No, it came out good. We went to Palm Desert to some like recording studio. Is that yeah. still, still open? Because they were like remodeling or stuff. I th- I believe so. Yeah, it was with a performance group that I used to play with, and like they would play country clubs and casinos and stuff like that. That type of group, yeah, just, yeah. and it was cool. So they allowed me to use that place, and we had some lights there already. We had the yeah. place. And yeah, and the whole the idea was just have a. The piano scene. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, it got it got pretty crazy. But nah, that was that was super dope. Like your guitar skills are crazy, bro. Like yeah, thanks. When you go into like people like what you're saying is like shock. You start with rapping. They're like, who's this guy? And I know you turn into that guitar. Yeah, know. it's really cool to see people at a rap show that I perform at, and I'm just playing. I'm just well, I'm playing my music. I'm rapping. I'm doing my thing, and people vibe with it too. People are turning up. People are going, hey, whatever, all that stuff. And I bust out a guitar. And sometimes people are just confused. I actually, I think it was Mills, you know, Mills the God, who told me. He said, "I thought you were just like." air guitaring at first i thought you were just faking it i thought oh my like this guy's really playing and it just blew his mind it blows a lot of people's minds because you don't expect a rapper who's seriously rapping and doing all that stuff to legit play guitar how did like the rapping start when you get that idea because i know you've been into rock for longer because yeah like you get into guitars with rock music you know, I always, How did that rap thing come about? I always tell people, well, I grew up a poor Mexican. I mean, <laughs> that's how that started. But yeah, it actually started by just hearing it around. And I thought some of it was cool, but I was never into gangster rap type stuff. And I liked Eminem, but I think a lot of people of any genre liked Eminem. Yeah. 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 So he was, that's how I got into rap as a kid, Eminem. Yeah, Eminem. But what really blew my mind was when I first heard Big Pun. I remember I'll, for a week, I listened to Big Pun. And Big Pun's Eminem style is famous for being very technical and lyrical. So is Big Pun. And he's right up to one of the craziest lyricists to ever have lived. And so I loved Eminem and I loved Big Pun. And I would just craft rhymes and I would worry about the art form the same way I'd worry about guitar playing. Because yeah, I got into music when I was younger. And I wanted to play all this shreddy stuff. I wanted to learn jazz. I wanted to learn cool things. And the same thing with the rap. I got really influenced by anybody who was really serious about the craft of rhyming. And there's a lot of guys, even today, people talk that there isn't, but there's guys like Jid and Token and Corday who really take the art of rapping seriously. And I love yeah. that stuff. So, And then, you know, just growing around, being around it. So, But yeah, I've been doing that for a few years and it's, it's, it's awesome. It's what I am. And like, have you tried making another type of music? Like rock music? Have, have you made... Because re- you were on a... Let's talk about the okay. reality show, bro. Yeah. So you posted on your story or I don't know if you posted or someone tagged you and yeah. it was like, oh, I, I was a... So what was the show called? No Cover. It was like no cover. We came out, you know, like got some Hollywood. It was like somewhere in LA, right? Yeah. So it was filmed in 2021 near the beginning of it. It actually took over a year to come out. Wow. So yeah, it was a thing where we were waiting and they said, okay, it'll be out by summer because we filmed it like spring of last year. And they said, it'll be out by summer. Summer came and went. It'll be out by fall. You know, it'll be out by winter. And we're just like, is it not coming out? All right. We kind of gave up on it. I think other yeah. people did too. But it came out and it was really cool because we got to perform. It was called No Cover because we performed original music. I went with Chris Doe, Miguel Bayo, and Sean McCune, also AO, dope rapper too. And we went and performed original music that we'd written, that we'd performed. And it was cool because it definitely was rock influence. It was with Sumerian Records, which is kind of a rock metal label, record label. If you ever heard of Animals as Leaders, they're on there and some famous big bands. But Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm was there. Gavin Rosdale from Bush was there. They were all judges. Yeah. Alice Cooper was a judge. Tosin Abassi, who's one of the greatest guitar players alive right now, was there. And Bishop Briggs was there, another crazy rock singer. So it was really cool. And you, we would go there. And the setup was that we had to just perform to only the judges because at the time, quarantine rules were still kind of crazy. But we got to, it was really, really cool experience getting to meet legit rock stars. People have toured the world. People yeah, who have that's... sold platinum albums and stuff. And they would hang out with us after we perform. We'd perform and then the other bands would perform. You, know, you wouldn't be able to see the other bands' performance, but we'd hang out with the other bands. They were almost all cool. And then we got to hang out with, Alex, like, someone tapped me on my back and I said, hey, man, you sound great. And it's Alice Cooper. I'm like, oh, my. Like, <laughs> Bro, I said in that video, like, on the final version, 
Like he's all smiling. Like you made him smile during a guitar solo. Oh yeah. You made a like a rock hall of famer legend. Yeah, he smile with your skills, but like you gotta tap into that music, that like that thing. Whatever that. Yeah, it was bro, because you got something right there. It was cool. I really, really liked it. It was a fun experience. It was a lot because we'd have to go to L.A. And we would drive and they say, okay, we need you here Wednesday. So we go Wednesday. And they say, we'd come back and we'd have to be, all right, well, we got Thursday, oh, so Friday. So it wasn't shot at one time? No, was we, it takes? was multiple days. Wow, that's and crazy. And as maybe you know with those reality shows, there's loads of time that they just cut out. So you get to see, we perform. They literally cut the songs, by the way. They cut the songs. So you don't even have the full performances. If you watch the songs, you'll be, oh, there's a verse and a guitar solo and then the outro. There's two verses on our first performance on that. Yeah. And they just cut a whole verse out, which blew my mind. That's I didn't, crazy. Yeah. I didn't know they'd Did do they that. Do that for other people too? Yeah, for everybody. But they, we would talk to the judges and you get to see the feedback from the judges. That was like 20 minutes long. And the show that you can actually watch, it's three minutes long. Yeah. So they cut a lot. So we're there filming all day. Did they give day. you guys raw footage or should, need to see that full performances or no? No. They just, no, that's what you get. That's but crazy. it was crazy because we get to meet legends and you got to meet also after the performances, you got to talk to other people who are heavy in the rock field. And yeah, I love rock music and I, I think that's definitely where I started. But I, that's not exactly yet where I see myself going. And even that, that was part of a band and I could see myself being part of a band. That was cool. But the thing about me is I'm really trying to tap in on the fact that there's no one doing exactly what I do the way I do it. And I'm not even sure if this is going to lead to the biggest mainstream success, but I know that I've always believed in the idea of niching down, you know, kind of like what you've done. Blue ocean strategy. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, right. Go where no one else is going. And so I rap, but I legit rap. And I'm spitting bars and all that stuff. And then I play guitar. And also, too, the guitar that I play, the way is kind of influenced by modern generation of guitarists. There's a lot of times when guitar solos come out in rap and hip-hop, which is always the coolest thing in the yeah. world when it does. When it's a blend, it's a Yeah, best. but it's usually very 80s metal shred guitaring or 1960s blues rock soloing, which I love. Some psychedelic stuff. Yeah, which is awesome and, and fire. And now there's been a huge wave of pop punk 90s stuff, but there's new modern guitar music coming out that's kind of changing the way guitar is played, the way guitar functions as an instrument. There's crazy effects and pedal boards that people are using that's never been used before. And that stuff to me is really exciting. So I'm trying to combine the cutting edge of guitar stuff in the way that i can do it because there's people doing stuff i can't even touch but combining that with the rap music that i like there's also a big wave in metal of guys like Poly bands like polyphia and even animals as leaders kind of helped start that the one of the who's they had a judge at the show where you have guitar music that's really influenced by trap beats and you yeah. have crazy shreddy guitar that's have you ever heard of polyphia no i haven't heard of that that yeah, so they play. Gotta check it out after this. They're sure. crazy. I'll show you something. You'll, it'll blow your mind. And they have trap beats that you could put behind a rapper. And the main guitar player, who's a big old shred master, Tim Hansen, he talks about the fact that yeah, his, he doesn't even listen to guitar music anymore. Although it's all instrumental guitar music, he just listens to rap. And so I'm trying to come from that angle, not from a guitarist who's trying to rap. I always tell people too, by the way, that I'm a rapper who plays guitar. And people that kind of confuses people, but that's good because you're it's, creating a new. Yeah, history. it's a new thing. But have you tried rapping in a different way? Not because I, I feel like sometimes you go too fast, like that fast <laughs> rap. Like yeah. I feel like the best rap. I mean, it's not the subjective, but it's like you want to be able to get people to sing the songs with you. Yeah, so you go too fast for people, bro. Like, the, you gotta, I do. You gotta, you gotta smoke some weed and relax a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so it depends on the song, because I have songs where I'm singing. I think maybe you've heard them. I have this next song that I'm coming out with that is just a vibe. It's really slow and wavy. And I got Ayana, who I have to shout out because she's singing on it. And the last song I did with Ayana, I don't know if you heard it, yeah, but I'm singing good. on that one. Yeah. And so. Not different shit. Try something like Yeah, no, I'm doing a lot of stuff. But I'm always going to do me. And also, a thing that happens with guitar and rap is if you get too technical just for the sake of being technical, it's cheesy. Whether you're rapping or you're playing guitar, it gets cheesy. It really does. It's corny. So I've, I've always thought that it has to be appropriate to the song. And so it just depends on what you're trying to go for. But yeah, I do experiment with a lot of different styles. In the past few songs, the past year since 2021, there's been different stuff, different beats, different vibes, different... Like I said, I'm singing on some of them. Not much of a singer, but I had to bust it out. So it's been fun. Yeah. 
that we work with other artists, like other rappers and stuff, trying to like make songs with people. Yeah. Because I haven't really heard you collab with a lot of people. So I have collabs that are recorded with people and they just haven't been released. So I did a track with Kile, who you know. Yeah, I know Kile. And he's cool. Shout and out Kile. Yeah, yo, shout out I, I Kile. I text him back. Sorry, I haven't texted you back. <laughs> My bad. He's going to get back to you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> but the, I did a track with Kile. I did a track with Millsgod. I did a track with MCKG. Oh, nice. And I did a track. It's recorded. I sent them a verse. I think I've heard one of them. I don't know who showed me one song. That you were in. And I did a track with Keila. I think he actually took it off for whatever reason. But I was a lot of people were surprised because they thought you don't rap like that. And I tell people too, you don't know what I can or can't do. You know. <laughs> so the the experimentation has been happening in the clap. And I've been I have a track in mind for a lot of artists and i'm just kind of working on my stuff right now but i do have things or beats ideas that i want to do with almost everybody but like with the show that i did right the the people on there amadeus mills mckg chardonnay lavish i literally had an idea for every one of them and maybe it'll come to happen maybe it won't for whatever reason but like they're all super dope and i really think i got to i can meet them somewhere in the middle of what i do and what they do and so i'm definitely trying to collab with people that show that you threw was amazing, bro. Let's talk about Preachella. Okay. That shit. So someone, I don't know, maybe you send me the link or Mills. Someone's like, oh, I've been performing this Preachella thing right before, the week before Coachella, week one. Yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. It's in India. I'll, I'll check it out. I feel like I made plans to go like last minute. <laughs> okay. And then um, we showed up and then it was just so dope because we never have any shows here. We, there's no nothing going on. And I've talked to like other clubs and other places where I see bands performing yeah, but they don't want to bring hip hop because no, they don't. It has a negative stigma, but the thing is, the gangster music, yeah, you know, guns, all the other stuff, like a lot of curse words. But all the artists that you brought into those shows, like all of them, are artistic and they rap about different stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. Maybe they do say some curse words here and there, but it's like it's just part of the it's real. style, you know. It's real. Yeah, they talk about real stuff, and I like that. You know, I want to promote stuff like that. Um, I try to not get involved with that kind of stuff, just the the gangster stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. For sure, you know, so I'm I'm excited for more shows. And that inspired me because I want to throw a show here in my backyard. Kind of yeah, like, that'd be crazy. Like party? Yeah. So I want to do that. I want to be able to uh, create a platform so it's more consistent. So that's awesome, but it's been two months, and we should have had, like, two more shows. So. Yeah. And that should have been, you know, like, every – I don't want to oversaturate the market, but I think two, three weeks apart, there should be something, bro. The tricky thing right now is it's like you said – the one of the reasons why I did that was because it's hard to find a venue that wants to support all these people that I think would do it right, that would do it justice. And so I thought, all right, let's do it ourselves. You know, that's kind of the classic mentality, right? The classic entrepreneurial spirit. If you can't find it, well, let's just do it. Let's make it. We got this. And so we did it outside and I just now it's getting really warm, you know? Oh, yeah, and so that was kind of a big thing. So I have been thinking about other ideas, venues. I have some ideas. I've talked to some people trying to make a couple of things happen. I thought about, yeah, I have some plans. I did want to keep it going, but I did know that we had to get it going because of summer. And it's just, it gets crazy hot here. As anyone who's been here five seconds during the summer knows. Yeah. So. Well, unless the shows are really late at night, even then it'll be hot, but it, yeah. it'll definitely help out like. 10 p.m. start time. Yeah. No, this is all stuff I've thought about. And the fact that you have this place here, definitely. Like, things can happen. I've thought about that, too. But, yeah, the reason I wanted to throw that event was just because I know there's a lot of dope artists here. There's a dope community. You know what's crazy is that there have been shows here and there, little kind of things, you know, pick up events, tiny little moments. And there was a... There was someone who messaged me, who DM'd me and said, yo, how come there's no rap stuff going on? And I said, what are you talking about? Like, there's loads of stuff. And so that kind of ideas, those kind of messages made me think, oh, we got to get it out there. We got to push it out there. So it was definitely really, really awesome getting everybody to do it. I was messaging everybody and looking at back at it now, there's so many things I could have done to, to make it even bigger and better and stuff but it was definitely a learning experience and i'm really really happy we came out and i'm really happy with how you guys documented it because you guys went crazy on the documentation and it was fire but yeah it, it was really cool and it was just something i had to do for the community how to get charnay on there how to get lavish and mills and i had to introduce people to ao who's this rapper i, I think you guys maybe didn't catch him because he was the first one no we didn't catch yeah him. i know so we didn't go into that plan so we ended up recording a bunch of the event but we went into the plan 
to shoot content for um, Amadeus because we, yeah. we were shooting a music video for him. Yeah, which went crazy. So we're like, okay, cool. We're going to get footage for him. But then all you guys started playing, so we didn't get the beginning because yeah, you we didn't have there. that plan. Yeah. But then I started seeing like the crowd react. I'm like, fuck, we got to be recording for these people because one of the biggest problems that it comes with the whole lack of all the people don't know, lack of awareness, lack of opportunity is because we don't show these venues that it could be a cool show. You know? Yeah, like, 100%. You show them footage the next time you want to pitch a show to a venue or a backyard or a fucking ranch or whatever. You're like, everyone's just chilling, like enjoying the music. And I want to be able to help out whatever I can. You know, I'm a, like the video production You're site. a force in this community, bro. And I'm, and I'm passionate about music and I like music and I, I listen to you guys and I watch you guys' stuff and it's like, you guys are super talented, like in different ways, you know, like. You have Mills who does a different ta- style. My Glavish, I'm a day. It yeah. sounds completely Everyone different. Everyone is crazy. And it's like, it's all these cool, like, sounding songs, but there's no content being made in the Valley. There's no distribution. Yeah. No one does enough TikToks and videos. And it's like, that's what you, people have to be doing, bro. Like, content. Like, I know a lot of people don't want to make content, but, like, you have to, bro. That's the way artists are getting recognized. That's how you start movements. That's how everything gets started, bro. Yeah, post, people post have to it. know you exist. With content, it's a tricky thing. Because I do see it. I don't have this negative view of marketing, of putting your stuff out there. And I think some people even have that. Like, if I'm great, they should come. Like, if you got people got to know you're great, right? Exactly. So, but I do. And anyone who's made music, anyone who's really creative has to understand that struggle of any moment you spend making content is legit moments you lo- lose making art, you know? And that's fact. So I'm, I'm not going to say that everyone should be making you know crazy amounts like six pieces of content every day i know that stuff is recommended at the same time though for you to not just share process so i think you got to find a system that's what i always think about i'm trying to get to the point now where i systemize everything with all my songs i have a system now i have i know what's like i have a song coming out right on wednesday on the 15th and i know what songs coming out after that i already have drafts for the next songs coming after i have a music video plan with this and i have all these ideas like writing and I write it all down and I realize I got to get on that with my content. So that way I can at least systemize it. I like with, so content is always being posted on social media, right? That's really what it ties into. Yeah. And I literally at this point, I, I program or I schedule my time on social media because social media, I'm anti social media in general. And some people kind of have that, but I don't really care for it. And it's fine if people like, you know, but for me, I don't really care too much for it. So I literally program my time and I think that's a compromise I can do. I say, well, if I don't want to be on social media, if I don't like it, I can at least schedule a time where I have energy, where I have the right mindset, so it is, and like, then just yeah. go on there, do it, then get out. Yeah, don't you don't have to consume. Yeah. The only time maybe interact in the comments if people comment. So I that's think it. Like, being I, systematic. For, for me, um, I go on social media every day, but I have all my notifications turned off. Yeah. So I, I don't smart. Do shit because 100%. Like, those little likes or comments or d- even DMs. Like Sometimes I, I, it takes me a while to reply to people because like, I, I don't even go into the app. And I just try to stay consistent, just posting. Yeah. So I have the mindset of posting. Right now, it's since Coachella, I've been just posting so much oh, content, man. bro. Like, I've been just... You're the grinding, Coachella, bro. You're like, Coachella angel. <laughs> You're the guy. Bro, during Coachella, so I would go to the first three days. I spent a lot of money on Coachella, so I would, my plan was to hire a, an editor to yeah. help me during that time. Yeah. But I didn't have money, so I was like, I worked. I didn't work. I went to Coachella like that Friday. I got home like at 1 a.m. and I started editing the videos bro, without going to sleep. Like after a whole 12 oh, hours man. of the festival. That's insanity. I posted like three, four videos. Then went to sleep. The next morning, woke up early, drank some coffee. Not that not early. I, I rested, but I woke up like at 11, 12. And instead of getting ready, I was editing. And then up to like getting ready to leaving to the next day. Wow, you're insane. Bro, it was like three days in a row, <laughs> two weekends in a row, bro. Second weekend, I didn't post as much because I was <laughs> yeah, You tapped out, bro. But I was like, I have to take advantage of this moment. Um, yeah, for sure. And ever since then, because like, I just made it such a part of my life. It's like taking a shower, brushing your teeth. It's just so, so like... Systematic. Uh, so systematic or... Like, I don't even think about editing. I just edit. So like, I've been p- making the podcast, make a bunch of clips posting them, posting them on like five different social networks. So that's something that we just realized in the month of May on TikTok. I got 180,000 views. Yeah, that's crazy. From all the videos I posted in the awesome. month of May, which was like over 30 videos. Some of them didn't do that great, but you'll have one that yeah, pops off. for sure. You replied that with another video, just kind of like finding ways to, to people to engage with the TikToks. And I posted those same videos on Reels, um, some on Twitter. So I didn't do a, a perfect job where like, 
If I make one piece of content, that video gets to all five social medias. I didn't post them on all of them. I only posted maybe a few on all of them, but I, I was kind of lazy about it because it takes time, bro. That's just so annoying. 100%. Yeah. It takes time. You know, Gary Vee talks all about this, about posting content, and I always think there's, there's a ground that's somewhere in the middle ground. There's a middle ground because there's people, there's authors who are famous for their literary works, right? And they don't even have an email address. You know what I mean? Like, granted, they're already at a level where they can do that. So, But I do think that there's a ground between not having an email address and posting six TikToks a day. And so, because people who do that, who, who post a lot, and that's really good. And I think for a lot of people, it can change lives. But also, how involved are they at, this, at becoming masters at their skill? And that is my whole philosophy. There's this book, Deep Work, that maybe you've heard of Cal Newport. And I'm very heavily influenced by the idea of really putting in deep work-focused hours of having time dedicated to what you're trying to do. And my craft is definitely the, where everything comes out. But I do think that there should be some leeway here. Like I said, you gotta, one thing is document, don't create, that, those type of ideas. That's the type of content you guys should be posting. I, I've been telling the same thing to all the other artists. Yeah, I know. I've been hearing the podcast. Bro, like, <laughs> you picking that up for three seconds and like, oh, going to go to a class or going to a gig. That's literally a TikTok. You don't have to edit shit. Just like, oh, shit, my guitar. I'm going to put it in, in the trunk. You close it. And then just tap in like on my way to teach some guitar. Yeah, I remember like, you, you were saying that. that. that simple, you were saying bro. that like, to the group about how you're doing that. Yeah, it doesn't have to be an elaborate, crazy edit. Like sometimes with graphics, like that takes time. Yeah. It could just be something simple because it's just awareness. So you just, yeah. You just and want, sometimes someone's thinking or like, oh, well, I should do something with an artist. Or I should do something. And then they'll see your story or they'll see that they'll scroll to your post. Oh, shit. Let me DM him about this or they have a question or an. And you don't get that if you're not on the feed. Like. Yeah, you got to pop up. It's true. So I have what's kind of crazy is one of the reasons why I want to throw the show is because there was a lot of crazy music out here. And I really didn't feel tapped into the community. Also, not only did I want to build community, I want to be part of it. I wanted to build it up because there's already here. It's just it's fragmented, but I wanted to be part of it. So and there is true. Only recently I heard of this singer, Delilah Rose, you know her? Yeah, I, 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 haven't, I, I haven't met I've her. I've met her once at the food park. Okay, so uh, I didn't even met her. I barely found out about her recently. And I was her song is coming up on my like, playlist all the time. Um, I use YouTube music. I know us. No I one use uses YouTube music. Oh, okay, for yeah, sure. Bro, let's go. <laughs> no one music. uses it. <laughs> but anyways, so her, her music is popping up on my playlist, and I didn't even know about her. That's I saw a video of her performing li live, and it was crazy. It was, she was great. So I haven't met her, so I don't, I don't even know what she's like. But I, the music is legit. And I just think about the fact that there's people out there. And same thing likewise. So Mills one time posted it's something I did, right? Yeah. And then people, like, I got three or four different people who started DMing me, following me, commenting on my things. Like, they're fans, legit fans, not just people who are like, okay, I'll check it out, I'll click a like or something. But, like, they're legit fans. And it's the, it's just because somebody, I got onto the radar somehow. Yeah. So I definitely think about that a lot. You know what's something that happens? And I, I don't know how to say this without, because it made me really reflective. My last song, right? When it came out on the first week, it got in control. Right? My new song's coming out 15th. But my, my last song, In Control, when it came out, it did 14,000 streams the first week, which I was happy with. For me, that's, that's where I'm at. I feel good with that, right? Yeah. But they tell you, at least on Spotify, how many streams you get from, and from what places, right? Location, so I was getting, yeah. yeah, I was getting all these numbers, and I saw From the Valley, and I don't really think this is anything bad, like hate revolved or anything, but I got 11 streams from the Valley. 11 streams from the valley the one with the the fi fire girl yeah so from and israel, that israel from the shore marisol 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 who killed it by the marisol way is, she's crazy she's fuck. yeah she, she did she, brian's board for his graduation too. oh dope yeah no she's crazy she's cool too really really cool vibes when you talk to her but the point i was getting with that was i have people dming me i have strangers i have I have fans, which blows my mind. I have legit people who follow my stuff, who put me on playlists, and I see that. I have people who DM me, That's which super is... Dope. No, it's crazy. Like, it's awesome. But it's only been recently that it's been people locally. Like, I see a lot of online things where people are talking about, like, you got to expand past your community. I didn't feel tapped into the community at all. And I don't think it was necessarily that people 
didn't like myself. Maybe they don't like myself. And that's cool. You know, 100%. I make well, I think the music. It's part of the you don't like social media. And that's the whole That's no, 100%. Why. That's what I'm getting so people at. People are finding you through the music, which is yeah. awesome. That's what you want. But yeah, no, 100%. That's post, exactly why I'm engaged. agreeing with you. You're not even showing up to their feet. It's not that the people don't even want to. But they don't even you, know. And that's the problem. That's the problem with music, bro. Like, you have to post. No, 100%, man. The shows, collaborating music videos with a lot of people involved. Like, that's the type of way just to get awareness, bro. Like, the, yeah. we were talking before the podcast, you said that what was the seven something rule. Oh, the, the rule of seven, the marketing rule. Where yeah. Someone's got to see your stuff seven times. You see yourself no, seven so, times. No, so, you know, since then, the and that was just the first day. I will say, I think the algorithm, for whatever reason, like, I just started promoting out of nowhere, and out, Instagram was like, the social media algorithms were like, what? You don't want to just get all spammy, you know? But I think maybe, I don't know. I have no idea, but algorithms are weird. But the point is that since then, I've been posting things and I've been posting like, yeah, behind the scenes We're for my music video, right? Yo, interruption. God damn it. So I want to do one last thing. song that I do live and least it was rare for me to find a gal who'd want that so after a certain point then I decided no more disappointment I try a new angle I keep things casual to me it seems shallow but I've been feeling bad though so I found a gal and thought I mean she passed no she was cute and nice a little shy the quiet side but she had a backside that let's just say pack size we were partners in parts for a concert we had wasn't hard to see the chemistry, so I asked her out. She said yes. That day went well. So did the second and third. Probably because we both knew that it was going nowhere. But I wasn't being fair to her. Acting from despair, I was hurt. Made sure it got serious to get what I thought I deserved. <laughs> wanted a relationship like you saw in the movies. Maybe I'm just another kid who watched way too much Disney. Every time I got a crush, I was head over heels. Never thought it's too much. Even if she possessed no appeal, I just needed someone to remove my insecurities. It's why I pursued this woman. Now it's based off insincerity. Don't get me wrong, we had some great times. In the daylight, we joke like, then we FaceTime the whole night. She come fight about her whole life, and I'd open up about mine. She even put up with me when I would joke some lame ass lines. A guy had hurt her before, so we took it real slow. Kind of a couple, kind of not. But still, it wasn't long till we were kissing in the park, smooching in the dark. But the cracks weren't far. Started having petty fights, 
which were easy to ignore, because it all felt right when we got to touching at night. petty fights, they'd always start again. We'd have arguments. We'd never even try hard to win. I wasn't happy with the apathy, but the sad thing is, we kept going, both knowing it had to end. If we made it through the day, we get intimate at sundown. I knew those feels weren't real, but if I were romantic when we'd clutch how, I'd stare in her eyes, say, this is what I want in life. Physical sensations with tangible connections. I miss that when it ended, even my hand being held. But I'm just selfish, this ain't about her. This song's about myself. It's about how now I'm skin deep thinking I'm winning if a gal's pretty and willing. When really, I'm just scared. Ever since another girl shattered my heart in April, well since then love's been no fairy tale fable. Combine that with the pain I had from this and every girl's made me feel bad. Suddenly I ain't so sad for relationship ain't gonna last. Now half you listeners are thinking, that's a while I live every single day. But the other half are thinking, wow, that's a life of shame. You don't understand. I used to be one of you. But now I'm like that man who's only one thing he wants to do. And see, this girl is always sweet and caring. I'm not mad. I'm just sharing. Finding the love of my life used to be what I was about. But things change. So now...
So what you were saying about social media, 100% true. Because since then, since my song came out, people have been checking out my music. Local people in the community have been checking out. I've been gaining, you know, it was crazy as I started getting fans from NorCal, from Maine, from Britain, like people who message me, who share my music consistently. But now I've actually been getting that from locally. And I think it's not that people didn't hate it. And there's going to be people who don't like what you do. And that's, that's fine. That's normal. But there's people who just didn't know. And you were right. I just have to put it out there. I don't think I have to be a slave to social media. I don't have to live, breathe, die content. Like some people say, unless you live, breathe, die content, nothing's going to happen for you. I don't think that's true, but I do think you got to at least be aware of it and accept the reality for what it is. Because as soon as I started posting stuff, I started getting more love from people. And that's why I, I definitely, I love this community. So I want to get tapped in on it. What what was like your biggest fan base? Like in what region of the world? Like you said that now people from the Valley stream your stuff, but like, what's the number one for you? NorCal. Northern California. I, I get loads of cities from up there. And there was... Uh, there was this kid who DM me and I don't know if this is weird, but I went and like a while back and I, I was checking out his profile. This was one of the first people who said, Hey man, I love your music. This is crazy. No one does what you do. Right. And that's the thing is I know that I'm the only guy who raps and plays guitar the way I do. I've never heard or seen anything like that. Yeah. So, and, and, there, and here's the thing too. Some people don't like that I rap. Some people think I should just play guitar, but I say, dude, I rap. But I've even had the opposite. People who know me for a long time say, you should just play guitar and why are you rapping? But other people who've bet, just met me, they'll be like, dude, I like the rapping, but why are you doing guitar? That's corny. I've seen both. I've seen people who don't like either way. But the thing is, there was that one, there was this one kid from a high school in NorCal and he DM me and he was saying, I love your stuff. And he started sh posting it and everything like that in his stories, which is kind of a drag when they don't tag me because yeah. <laughs> like, well, you know, I can't, I don't want, I felt weird doing the screenshot thing. Yeah. <laughs> but by the way, tag artists when you share their stuff, like they appreciate yeah, you it. You play that music on like just driving on your car, just tag them, bro. Like it's, I've gotten reshared by some big like names. Yeah. It's just awesome. You share them. Like people just, oh, you're appreciating my music. Let's, let's play it. And what was crazy was this other kid DM me from the same school. And so I don't know if he just heard me independently or if he Wait, started him, yeah. or started heard it through him, probably through that. But either way, I saw a lot of numbers there. And I also I've gone on some playlist. Like the what I mean by playlist is not just people making their playlists like, oh, rap music, whatever this, or you know, I got on this one place which made sense. Rap music with guitar. I was like, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> but I got on there. And the there was this guy the with my song All Out, which is where I started, this came out early 2021. I heard this guy put, he called it his Joiner Logic playlist. And it had Isis, which was a song that Joiner Lucas did with Logic. And it had a bunch of like rapidy rap guys, like crazy bars. It had another Joiner song. It had a Logic song. It had like Denzel Curry and one of his songs where he's just spitting. And then it had me, he put All Out. And so, and that song doesn't even have a guitar solo. So I knew people liked what I did and people were liking the vibe. But like I said, maybe it's just not for people around here but beyond that they didn't even know so some people are just never gonna like music ever which is cool 100 yeah. percent. but yeah, there's, there's a they of, need to know you should have yeah, a there's chance enough people in the world like it doesn't 100 percent. yeah so you make videos with the audience in mind of course you you do want to make some good stuff but you're not tapping in into the locals because we have social media we have music yeah videos, the algorithm that's catering to anybody bro like and this community here is dope. We're not tied into back in the day where you just literally stuck with whatever you got. Yeah. You I got to know the record labels, but. You know about the 10,000 true fans, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what or is that? 1,000 true For fans. For the people who don't know, what is that? 1,000 true fans is that a true fan is someone who will spend $100 on you a year. So if you can get 1,000 true fans, then you can get $100,000 a year. And that's a livable life. 100000 a year, that's to this day, because this theory came out like, over 10 years ago yeah, but and it's not it's not like they're gonna give you 100 bucks because they're gonna buy your hoodie but it's like throughout a year throughout one the year. time they buy a 25 dollar hat and next yeah. time they go to your 15 dollar show maybe they buy your album maybe they listen you, to your music on the regular so just through their streams five dollars from the streams or whatever and it all adds up to 100 so a thousand yeah. times 100 it's a hundred thousand so you only need to cater to a thousand people if you really want and i think about that a lot because i make the music that i want to make and so 
I definitely, the numbers have been getting better. I've been looking at my streams. My, with the last video that I put out, the streams are going up. My subscribers went up. And what's cool is because I finally, I was a bit smarter about how I posted it. People are sharing it. People are liking it. And then it also, it was hitting up, like, I was getting strangers commenting on it. You can go on there and check, and strangers are commenting who like my stuff. So I was a bit smarter about it, but the numbers haven't gone up. But ultimately, I think about, yeah, true fans who's because what I do, I want to make stuff that only I can do. And there's two ways to approach success. I think in really any industry is you can try to be the best or be the only. And being the best is really, really hard. But you can be the only. And also, too, with music, with any art form, you can't. People sometimes will see somebody famous like Post Malone or something, right? And they'll think, oh, I'm going to be Post Malone, but better. Like, you're dumb. You know, there already is a Post Malone. And then there's so many. And so you definitely have influences, but you can only really truly be you. So if you max in on you, like you said, with the power of the internet, there's a thousand people out there. There's some guy maybe in the UK who loves... There was this dude from some Middle Eastern country who DM'd me and he said, I love the fact that you... I forgot what he said on guitar. He said someone who kind of crazy, but he said, I love the fact that you rap like Eminem and that you play guitar like somebody else. And I wasn't even sure if I... Felt like I related to both the people he said, but the idea was for this guy, he couldn't find anybody like that. And then now he did. So I do what I do. You're and tapping I know, into, and yeah, because exactly. most people are multi genre fans, you know, like that's true. I listen that's to true. Spanish music, like I love corridos. Like I just got super since Coachella, bro. I watched <laughs> Nathaniel Cano. I've, I was on shrooms at Coachella, so like, yeah, that experience like got me into corridos. I've been just consuming that. shit. Corridos Tumbados, old school ones, and all this stuff. And um, that's I also been tapping into the bandas. So I'm yeah. surrounded by that music. There's good now. stuff happening. And then it's like, I like that stuff, but I love hip hop. You know, like I love Kanye. I love hip hop from the 2010s. But also, I listen to French artists, yeah. Brazilian, different languages. Um, I took like six years of French in high, high oh. school and college. Also, you still you understand it pretty well? I understand. Well enough? Like, a little elementary school, you know. I'm okay. Not, you know, I'm not going to. <laughs> Yeah, right. Not gonna front. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna front, but I do understand some. For and sure. I, and I'll be watching the music videos with like the French subtitles to try to like. Oh okay, yeah. Rhyme with the. That's audio. that's awesome. And I got to see one at Coachella. Uh, his name's Strome. I gotta put you oh, on this dude. I know about Strome. Dude, he's amazing. Yeah. Bro. He's a fucking an artist. Bro. He's legit. So like, I've been consuming his music, and like that's how people are. So I, if someone tells me just like music, like I don't understand the people that only like one genre. Like yeah. I mean, it's all everybody has their own thing. Those people have fun when they only listen to that gangster rap or fucking, you know, yeah. trap. People just like the trap. Some people like EDM, like music with no words and shit. Just yeah. boom, 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 boom. That's stage. It's all energy. They love that shit. And That's, drugs. It, <laughs> <laughs> it's Brian at the gym like that. That was just listening to the EDM with no <laughs> words and shit. So, um, yeah, like everybody got their own thing. But like for me and I think most people, we like different genres. And when you combine, you're an artist that's combining rap and combining crazy rock music. It's like, fuck, there's a, a new style. I mean, you're creating a new style. Or I don't know if there's other people who have done it, but at least, at least you're the only one I know for sure. Yeah, I'm just tapping into my wave. And ultimately, I think you need to tap, as an artist, you need to tap into what makes you you. You know what I mean? Because everyone has their own influences. And also, too, with the stories that I tell. Like, I don't write about gangster rap music because I haven't lived a crazy gangster rap life, you know? I've, I've, I've lived a struggle life, a life full of struggle. I've lived, uh, I've had some crazy moments in my life. I've been really high emotionally, really low emotionally. I, like a lot of people, I've had bouts of depression or struggles and things like that. I've also had moments where I'm just like, damn, I just, I killed that. I'm, I'm the most badass guy in the world. Or at least I feel that way. Yeah. You know, so, and I'm, I can only write about those experiences truly. I can... I can write about other people, and I think there's, it's pretty cool to write up creatively about other people's experiences, but either way, you're writing about other people's experiences as you perceive them. Yeah. So everything you do is always shaped by the lens that you, the lens you have on your life. So I think that with the stories I tell, because all my songs, too, I always make sure there's a point there, an emotional context you can grab. Music is a mood-altering drug. That's what music is. That's the purpose it serves in life. Music makes you feel good. It can make you feel bad, which is crazy that people are addicted to misery, but sometimes people want that. They kind of need that. So music is a mood-altering drug that makes you feel a certain way. So I always try to have some sort of emotion or mood that you can latch onto with the songs that I feel. But the way I express it musically is going to be with the music that I listen to, the music that I love. And I'm definitely exploring and finding different vibes, different sounds, different beats, different things, different flows, different ways of playing music. But yeah, I have I have a 
some skill set that I can use. So I tap into that. What are like your biggest inspirations? Like what are like your three, three favorite or three artists that you really admire, you really like? Bands, artists, oh, whatever. man. Just three that you're like, these guys are here. I would say that's a tricky thing. It, it changes. Any artist it will tell change. you it changes. <laughs> it's tough. It depends. It changes in your season of life. It changes on the day. I would say one of the biggest influences rap-wise was Big Pun. He will always be just crazy. I think Eminem, too, because he got me into it. And both of those guys are super crazy lyrical. The... I'm trying to think the beginnings of it. So like who helped me become Razor J on guitar. I remember the moment I first heard communication breakdown by Led Zeppelin. And that blew my mind as I was small as little kid. And I was like, Whoa, it was just the cool. And the guitar solo was the coolest thing ever. Same thing when I first heard Van Halen and when he died, I felt that man, I don't think non guitarists know how important he was to the guitar community. He, it was it's crazy so he was yeah there wouldn't be razor j without any of those guys and i mean i listen to a lot of stuff the i have a, a classical beat and hate on that the video that you did yeah. and so classical music i still to this day will listen to tchaikovsky occasionally i don't listen to classical music as much but tchaikovsky's harmonic ideas and his the way he approached orchestration it's kind of a certain era of classical music but i really like that era. do you really know the history of how just music in general just like or from the classes you've taken or what yeah i i, I took i studied music in college oh, and nice. i did that i studied jazz so i mean i love a lot of jazz guys dizzy gillespie's is, i don't know if you know that is but he's a jazz i, I don't know anybody you've said in the last five minutes i'm just gonna point that out so, <laughs> <laughs> you just nod your head. Oh, those guys. Like, fire, bro. Yeah. yeah, big Sean, bro. That's all I know. Uh, <laughs> big Sean, big Sean's I fire. Big, big Sean's bro. fire. <laughs> so no, but I so yeah, nowadays there's you know, another thing that I think affects me is I don't my biggest artists right now aren't like the biggest artists in the world. You know? The uh once again, Post Malone, I gotta meet Post Malone too. It's super cool. I gotta oh, hang shit, where at? Uh, at Guitar Center. During Coachella, Post he's, on a guitar center. he stopped crazy. by, and uh, man, it's I gotta meet, like get to a level where I can meet him one day and bring it up. But he stopped by, and then I was playing guitar, and for whatever reason I was there, and he said, "Hey man, that sounds good." And he kept walking as he said, and I, "I've I've heard people say that before." So I was like, "Oh, thanks." Like your post, I wanted to say, I, I'm glad I did it, but I was like, "Your post Malone." So I didn't say that. Thankfully, I didn't embarrass you myself. Said it, bro. You should take a picture with them. So I did. Oh, so I, I didn't say that. But I was like, oh, thank you, Google. Right? I was just, whoa, that was kind of crazy. And it was the, the year he played for Coachella. So he was big, but not huge. Like you know? 2017, 18 I think it was 2018. Yeah. And so what was crazy was afterwards, he, he bought like thousands of dollars of gear and stuff. And afterwards, he was uh, taking us, he was smoking outside. And I went to go talk to him. And I was going to see him that weekend. Because I think it was between weekends, and I went to him. And I said, "Hey, man, I don't want to bother you." Because I always feel like celebrities get bothered at times. Like, but can we take a picture? And he says, "You ain't bothering me. I ain't doing anything." And he, so he puts out a smoke, and so we take a selfie. Came out kind of blurry, but it's there. I'll send it to you. And, That's so dope, bro. And, but the crazy thing is, we just talked for a bit, for like five minutes, and we're right outside Guitar Center, right in Palm Desert. And there's it's nighttime, so it's you can't really see but if you drive by you're not gonna it's not obvious yeah but if you look you can tell it's him and cars are just driving by i remember seeing like teenage girls walk by i'm like they have to know who post malone is and they're just they go into the tj maxx it's right next to guitar center and we're just chatting it up while people are walking driving by us if they at any moment turn to look they would be post malone and nobody he just, noticed no one noticed nobody noticed that's crazy and man. i just talked to him for a little bit and like about, oh, yeah, you're playing Coachella. It's like, yeah, it should be cool. You're going to be there. Yeah, I'll be there. whatever stuff, you know, for a few minutes. And I said, well, I'll let you be, man. He's like, all right, cool. See you there. And I, yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. It was crazy. Man. I have a picture. It was, it was blurry, <laughs> but you can tell it's him. And I thought about asking him for another one. I thought, nah, I just, I'm not going to push it. I don't want to bother him. Like, oh, now this angle, now that angle, now with you, me, like, now, nah, but know. that interaction, brother. It was, just it was really cool. Moment. He probably remembers going to Guitar Center. So he has to remember that. Yeah, I and that Post Malone. Play Coachella, like. I am a fan too. So I guess to go back to the main point is, I love Post Malone. I love Drake. I love Kendrick. I love a lot of guys who are popping right now, right? But my biggest influence is, I guess, the biggest influence that I have right now, who's probably popping, is Jonah Lucas. 
yeah. who's, who's crazy. And I've been on him, like, following him for five, six years. I knew about Social him. Social commentary in his videos. Yeah. yeah. No, and his flows are crazy. His beat ideas are real crazy. The concepts in the videos are insane. So I know I sound like a hipster, but, you know, I've been following him for years, like, before anybody <laughs> knew about him. And but beyond that, like one of my favorite artists right now, which I think surprised people, is Baby No Money. You've maybe heard of him. Nah, I haven't. I, heard I him. love Jid, JID. JID. I bet he found out about him right before Coachella. Like, yeah, no, I've been fo- I, I've been following him for cra- for a long time. So it was crazy he was playing Coachella. Like those are my favorite artists right now. Not guys who are mega huge superstars. Because everybody knows their music. Like you know that's. Yeah, like saying you like fucking California love, like of course you do. Everybody yeah, no, I do. Of course, it's that's a banger. Yeah, so dude. I love all the guys who are at the top, but like the guys who influence my music right now, and I think that's a factor of it too. Like when I, I always th- I talked about this with my with my sibling the other day about the fact that you know if my music did the best it does, it's not. At, it's not the type of music I feel like that's 100% that could be getting billions of streams on YouTube. My type of music, if I was able to do it at the highest level that I want to do it, the closest artists I see myself are getting 30 million views, you know, which obviously it would yeah. be great and fantastic to have. But I don't feel like I make the music that would be at least maybe things will change or whatever. And I love them to change to what I'm doing. But I don't currently try to make the music that's super popping right now. Not because I hate it or dislike it, like you said, just because the biggest influence to the guys who are make the guys and gals who are making me think like i want to make that they're people who are huge but not gigantic they're yeah. playing coachella but they're not headline you know what i'm saying yeah, those are like, like my you're, favorite you're, guys you're, you're gonna just keep evolving you're it's been growing a, you're gonna get in a crazy studio session with some artists oh yeah 100 you, you might do some humming that you're in here about like you know you never know bro like you <laughs> yeah. just gotta keep doing it and even post malone like the, have you seen his old videos when he was yeah. like, making weird it's inspiring some weird music i don't even know what that music was and he looked kind of funny but he just was making it, you know, like you just, like you were saying in the beginning of the podcast, is like you continue on that grind. Yeah. Sometimes I don't even know what I was doing for a long time. Like even now, like I just been doing shit, bro. Like I'm going to make a video. Make it happen. Fuck. Like my, maybe I don't have the most concrete plan, but I'm just going to make another video and then I'm going to start the podcast and start another podcast I started recently and shoot music videos and you just put yourself out there and a lot of stuff that's good happens when you do shit, so... Just keep grinding, bro. No, and I want to say that. I want to take... I said this a little bit earlier, but what you and Brian have been doing is inspiring. You guys have been doing it the right way. You guys are grinding. You guys are putting out there. You guys are elevating your status, but also while bringing other people up. And that's something I think about. I'm trying to get tapped into the community. I'm trying to live my status. I'm not going to lie about that, but I'm also trying to bring other people up with me. You know, it's, you know, you can rise together, right? That's the best. The only and way that's what you best. guys are doing. Yeah. You guys are crazy with that. You guys are consistent. You guys are grinding. You guys, you know, it's kind of that thing where maybe you'll have a dip here and there, but you guys just are bumping and your guys keep elevating. I love what you guys are doing. And I want to say one more thing about what you guys did for a, the Frankenstein video by Mills. Yeah. This really stuck with me. Is you were filming it and Brian was doing the lighting. And then I remember Mills was rapping. We were all behind him. It was a cool scene. And I'm in that video, right? I'm playing some uh, guitar, yo guitar. <laughs> and so you're you're filming him and it's late at night. So you have this, Brian has this crazy bright light going on. And then it felt like, it reminded me of like military tactical precision. Because you're like getting Mills. You're like, Brian, to the left, to the right. And Brian's like super focused and you guys are going is like Le- go 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 degrees degree left degree left and you're like he's going and it was just cra- i was like blown away you guys were a military precision camera team and <laughs> the video know. came out crazy <laughs> and then i thought too like you were you were like yelling at brian and i thought oh man is he gonna take this crazy and brian was like he looked just as angry as you were like, oh i gotta get this shot perfect like i was i was blown away that was in that was inspiring <laughs> Real talk. That was dope. That's just crazy, but we did not plan out that music video. Oh, like, we just that's why we were just so on edge because we didn't have enough lighting. So okay. we needed to have that light. And then Brian was like, he I don't know if you saw when he like dove into the grass. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that, was... that wasn't necessary, but <laughs> that shit was fun. Everyone was like, what the fuck? This is all into it. You guys are crazy. No, I love what you guys like, are doing. Like making videos is awesome, bro. It's like just surrounded by other people. And that's what like, I've been trying to tell everybody is like. You you build by working with others, yeah, you know? and m- making shows, throwing shows, doing videos, making vlogs, just you know, just shooting music videos, and inviting other artists to be in the videos. Like that's like what builds the community because we're all sharing those experiences and going back to enjoying every moment. Like I enjoy every moment, you know, making a music yeah. video for you, that was fun or for Mills, and then you're in that video too, yeah, or like. Even making a vlog I, for my birthday party, you showed up, and Mills and uh, Billy <laughs> Dell were there. We were vibing, like, dancing to Mexican music. 
and it's like a cool experience and that's what you remember you know and you're enjoying whatever it is like having this awesome conversation boom like that's another memory another experience that's yeah what I, I think because we often want the big stuff you know like oh shit i wish i would be playing coachella like next year but yeah enjoy what you're doing now performing at Preachella, performing at Bart's, yeah. you know like that's you gotta enjoy those moments too that's the thing that i was saying is that locally i think you guys are killing it because and i get inspired by that and i really wanted to get systematic the past few months since 2021 i've really like i've been because of you i'm literally for the next two and a half weeks i'm posting tiktoks daily so I have them already planned. And I'm very systematic about the way, because I know what I want. I want to play Coachella. I want to be up there, one of the top guys playing Coachella. And I'm, I continue to make progress. And I know I'm just addicted to that progress. I'm not addicted to the, to the goal. That's, that's, a, you know, that's just a, a, a guiding light that kind yeah. of lets me know which direction I got to take. That lets me know the direction. But I've been making nothing but progress. My numbers keep going up. But I'm not addicted to numbers. I'm like you were saying, I'm addicted to experience. I'm trying to make it happen. I'm trying to make it fun for me and for others. And that's going to make stuff happen. And I've been making it happen. It's been great. So I, I really 100% feel, I said 100% like seven times this video. You need to <laughs> do like a counter or something. You'll see. I said, wait, I don't even talk like that. But, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But I'm inspired by what you guys, and I'm making it happen too. I do believe that I'm, you can check what i'm doing i have the right, song coming out in, anybody listening we're gonna keep them in and everybody watching like whenever you see an artist post like a little it's a 15 second video you know like a, a tiktok a real just like or comment like comment even in an emoji like you don't have to like leave a whole thought yeah just comment. It's appreciated sometimes you share i know some people don't want to be spammy in their stories like yeah. i like to share people's shit like it doesn't matter it goes away anyway but like yeah at least comment bro like like it comment and then that helps the artist get a little more exposure you know like that that extra two people that might watch it, it adds up over a long period of time, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, if you're listening to this, like people's stuff. And then when you post, because you're liking people's stuff, people are going to like your shit, too. So you get some of the, the social points and the, yeah. the, the, the good adrenaline rush. It feels nice, too, that, that feeling of sharing. The, there's loads. I read a lot. And there's loads of people who talk about this. Very smart people who say that you gain by trying to give, give to others. Gary Vee talks about this. The Adam Grant talks about this. Eric Barker, Brian Johnson, a lot of authors that I, I love talk about this. Yeah, I know some of those people. For yeah. sure, like, you're bringing value to people because you're part of... So when you were saying a thousand true fans or you're talking about, you know, like, 30 million views, each of those views is a human. That's what yeah. Gary B likes to say. is like, you forget, like, your video gets 500 views. You're like, oh, fuck, it only got 500 views. But that's 500 people, bro. Like, put 500 people in a room. Yeah. That's a whole concert, bro. Like... You get a thousand views, that's, you know, a thousand people from all over that watch your shit. Like, put them in an arena, that's amazing. So, so don't, like, get, like, scared or disappointed with, like, whatever yeah. your video performs, you know? Like, as long as you're doing a good job, you're putting in effort, and then you move on to the next project, you know what? I'm going to get better, learn from this or whatever, just put out the next one. And, you know, like, again, enjoying each, each process. Oh, yeah. I love, let me ask you, because I know... I don't feel bad about it because I know my purpose. My purpose, and I have eight words, create art that inspires and makes people feel. So anytime I do anything, I say, Does it, am I creating art that inspires and make people feel? Feel happy, sad, bad, whatever. Horny, celebration, crazy, you know, depressed. Does it make people feel? And that's what I see my goal. So if I'm doing that, I'm doing what I'm doing. Do you have that? I, in any, I know that's a crazy question to ask, but do you feel you have a purpose? So for the longest time I didn't, and ever since Coachella this year I did. So I always knew I was I wanted to do something big, and I just didn't know what. So yeah. I would just want to start or be part of it. Like I don't have to be the main one, but I want to definitely do my part and just try to create a music movement from the valley. You know, like that's and I know we could do it. It's just yeah we have the Coachella shit. So that's the shit I've typed I tapped into. I mean I love going to the festival and I create content on the festival now, but. I had a strategy to get a bunch of views based on the Coachella videos, you know, by helping people. All the videos are helping people. Yeah. Um, and I'm tapping into that. And then, like, at Coachella, I saw people, like, coming up to me. Like, I, I posted some videos of people coming up to me that I recorded, but there yeah. was a, a lot that I didn't That record, was so bro. cool, man. So, like, every day, I might be recording, like, an hour at Coachella. But I was there for, like, 12 hours. So, the other times, I wasn't even using my camera. <laughs> like, some shit that you're not supposed to see on YouTube. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, what are you so talking yeah, about? Like, people come up to me, like, oh, shit. What? I, I ran into people, like, waiting for artists. People walking in the field. Hey, love your videos, man. Just, like, That's someone crazy. tap you. Like, crazy shit like that. And I was like, I have 
I had maybe like 4,000 subscribers, but I'm like, damn, all these people, like, at least they've seen my videos. I be, I was waiting for Baby Keem or Big Sean, and we were like in the middle of the, of the crowd, and then some kids, uh, they're actually local. I don't know if they're, for, they're 20, 21 from, from the Valley or whatever. They're like, you look familiar, and then some other person recognized, they're like, oh, shit, I seen your video. You did something about like 24 items to take to Coachella or something. Like, oh, yeah, that is him. No wonder you look familiar. And I was just next to them, like, at, waiting for Big Sean. Then at a mosh pit during Baby Keem, some uh, some dudes like dude, dude from YouTube in the middle of the mosh pit, bro. That shit was crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that shit trapped me out. And then some people like, oh, I'm a fan of yours. I've seen your videos. Thank you for helping me out. And I bunch of DMs and like people would tag me and shit. So it's like I I know I tapped into something there and I'm just getting started, but I never knew a purpose. Like I was just going, and then just watching the music and shit. I was like a concert. Like I get it, but you gotta make it. Why do people go to Coachella? It's because it's fun. It's pretty. It looks cool. Like the, the space experience is amazing. The, the experience is cool. So I was like, I want to be able to throw shows that bring that to the table. So your pre cello show is amazing because there's nothing like it. And you're tapping into blue ocean strategy. But what if we make that show fun with yeah. pretty lights? No, it can for people for Instagram pictures for sure. Make it a vibe and buy people work with other influencers, other artists. Uh, a, a professional stage like that's that's my goal like I, I know a dj who does professional stages like i just want to tap into that and i know I, it takes a lot of teamwork to kind of get that together but i'm like that's the vision because that's the only that's way that's, that people are going to take rap serious or they're going to take even music like not even just rap but like the spanish stuff yeah all these dudes are so talented bro they play like three gigs on the weekend bro like playing parties like imagine how much practice they're getting just singing and yeah. playing their instruments but no one's like bringing out to the light so that's when everything was clicking throughout the weekend. I was just like, okay, oh, maybe we should do some rap shows. Like, I, I watched Brockhampton, and I didn't really oh, know Brockhampton. I love Brockhampton. I didn't even know them, to See, be honest. That, that's like but the type I of music I vibe. And I'm like, this shit's crazy, bro. Brockhampton is crazy. And it creates, um, so what I, I was, it's from the cheerleader effect. You heard of the cheerleader effect? Yeah. You see a bunch of people on stage, and everyone's going crazy, then you want to go crazy, too. Yeah. You see people going hard in the crowd, you want to go hard, too, so... We need to create that vibe with every show that we have. Some of them, of course, their music is not going to be hype, but maybe make them feel something else. And then I was like, I want to be able to do that kind of shit. So I guess that's like my new goal that I just found. But that's cool, man. At least I want to give it a shot, like with all and no, you know, like have fun. Like I love, I love every fucking event. I uh, we went to Bart's and there was like some crazy, like experimental DJ uh, two weekends ago during Mills's birthday. Yeah. So we went to see him perform in DHS. It was crazy. The the, the weekend that was crazy week uh, windy. Then we went to Bart's, and then there was a crazy DJ. We just like it was like EDM night or some shit. But it was some weird music, and I was I loved it. Like, I was just having fun with the friends. So just anything with music and live events and just having a good time. And I want to bring that experience to other people while making it about the artists. You know. Yeah. No, man, that's crazy. I've I don't know. If I felt that, but there was something different in the past couple weeks since you've been posting, since you've been sharing. And I don't know if it's just subliminally coming out in your messages, your messages or your post or whatever. But even that recently when you posted the video, which was crazy, and then you posted that reel saying, like, I'm trying to make stuff happen. I can't do it by myself. Like, there was an urgency there. And I think that's crazy. Like, now that you have a purpose, to, considering how far you've come already, that it's just going to be amplified. Yeah. And I do need to say that I... Real talk, in 2019, I went to Coachella and I bought a ticket off somebody off Craigslist and I thought, what if I get ripped off? So I looked how to buy a ticket off somebody and your video came up. <laughs> and I, was, I wasn't good. looking for your video. Your video was first. That's sick, bro. You're the, you're the guy, man. No, but we're, we're all just tapping in right now. So whatever the next, you know, five years, we're just going to grind it out. And I know that tapping into the, the market. So I love Coachella. I've been going since before social media, but I figured, okay, I'm going to tap into Coachella to help everything else so that's why i started calling it coachella underground when i posted the videos oh yeah because i know the same way i did it with my youtube channel is gonna happen with this because coachella starts trending so anything that has the name coachella on it automatically gets more more algorithm shit yeah I see so that. then it's gonna help all you guys like whenever we make more shows we'll post everyone's performance um and then what i want to do is have you heard of like lyrical lemonade or uh, yeah of course so that's what i want to do with the story filming that's so I see it now. I want to post music videos on, on that page because when your video gets dropped, all the other artists are going to get recommended as like, watch next. Yeah, you know I, mean? so I see. It, it's not like when you post your video on your channel and then Mills on his channel and 
it, they kind of get buried because no one has enough content. But like, what if there's a channel where you post it, or it, it could be like any other artist they'll post a video, and then like your channel, your video does good, and then the other ones get a boost, and then oh, maybe you saying. haven't posted a video in like a month or whatever. Then this will drop some music video, and then all the your video and all the other videos get a boost, and it's just everybody together tapping in into like one pot, and that's like basically what Lyrical Lemonade did. Yeah, just Lyrical Lemonade is really cool. Artists, so. Yeah, that's like, I'm still kind of figuring out the details, but I definitely want to, I haven't really put it out there until right now, so. That's, I'm glad you're able to put it out there. There was a moment where you said, I don't know, I'm just going to try it. Bro, don't even do it, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, Feel it. What do you think of, um, what do you got going on coming up soon, um, music-wise, or just like? Yeah, I have the song coming out June 15th, Maybe You Should, and I got a mention ayana she's this pop singer that i've worked with before i've made some beats for her and we've worked together but she's crazy she's so talented her music if you like pop music and this you know this doesn't do her justice but what some of her biggest influences are bb rexa and halsey and stuff like yeah, that I've, I've seen uh, i've seen her perform with you a couple of times yeah and she's crazy remember, good was it in that podcast where you mentioned that she was from Chicago or something. That yeah. She, yeah, you were like, I got the Chicago artist. That's when you were first starting working with Oh, yeah, I just met I her back that. then. Yeah. And now we've released music together. I've made beats for her. And she's doing stuff. She's in L.A. right now, but she's doing stuff. And what's crazy is she writes songs like nothing. I'll come up with, I'll send her something, a beat, and she'll come up with all these crazy melodies. We'll meet up for, link up for a studio session. And she'll come up with some words on the spot and everything. And... It's just crazy because every now and then she can just like bust out a song right then and there if she wants to, you know, and it can be catchy. It can have this crazy melody. It can have some lyric that makes you think. So she's really cool. That's why I, even back then I recognized her talent was crazy. She put out a video a while back, Crave You, that the, the visuals are insane. The visuals are just as good as any major label artist and the songs fire, you know, like so the, I have a song coming out with her called Maybe You Should. And you were talking about different flows and different vibes this song is definitely sort of experimenting um it's really emotional it talks about some more serious stuff and some some relationship type stuff but i really tap into a different feeling and i'm really narrative story driven type of song so it's something that people are just gonna hurt or people are maybe not gonna want to listen to it because it hurts them too much yeah. to think about <laughs> it but after that i got another song lined up called real bad okay. which I it's I don't know if you heard it because I know you're jumping around doing stuff at the show at Preachella, but like it's my raunchiest song and it's crazy and like at Preachella girls are twerking to it like every place <laughs> I play it's like it's the craziest like it's a uh, it's a uh, you know you want to do bit dirty stuff to it you want to get real bad to it <laughs> so I got that coming and actually I want to talk to you about that because I have an idea of something with you but visually but. I have those two songs coming, so if you stay tapped into Razor J and, and everywhere, you'll find that yeah, stuff no, coming. Yeah, we'll, for sure. We'll talk about it. We'll make some, yeah. some visuals. And um, yeah, I'm excited, bro. Like, it's been three years since we did the last podcast. I Lots definitely got to have you on like sooner or more often. Bro. Yeah. If you want to tap in, because like, sometimes I have other artists, you could always be part of the conversation. Just sit in and like just enjoy podcasts or be a co-host for like a couple episodes. Like That's what I was trying to do. It's also created a vibe here, you know. Okay. You get to meet other artists and see yeah. other perspectives and shit. Like Th this is already becoming a hub. You know yeah. that, right? Like this is a place, uh, a spot in the town. This ain't just you know a room that you guys set up to record in. This is a a, a location that people know about that people want to be in already. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, like we're just starting, bro. So hell yeah, thank you for coming. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, and I'll put the link in the description. Make sure you guys follow Razor J. Can I can I shout someone out? Yeah, yeah, go for it, go for it. It's a homie, Just Jake, a producer, super crazy. His beats are insanity. He's going hard, really, really crazy hard. And also, shout out to these two guys right here, Brian and Angel. If you watch this because you follow my stuff, thank you. I appreciate that. But you guys should really tap into what they're doing, too. They're yeah, awesome. Bro. I got a surprise for you. I'm about to do a party with Just Jake right now. What? He's, he's in another room. What? <laughs>